You're listening to Chicago Stories, a new podcast from City Hall featuring the stories of everyday Chicagoans as told to Mayor Rahm Emanuel. This is Mayor Rahm Emanuel, and uh, we're doing Chicago Stories. It's a podcast of different people around the city doing really interesting things. Allison is the principal of Curry High School, and I think their graduation is tonight? Yeah, we're tonight at 6 o'clock. It's an exciting day. It is an exciting How big is the graduating class? Uh, this year's graduating class will have 490 students. Tell me where uh, Curry is. I mean, I know it, but... Yeah, so Curry High School is low... Curie High School is located in the Archer <laughs> Heights neighborhood of Chicago on the southwest side. Was that an emotional moment right there? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it was a... Uh, yeah, Archer I Heights. I have a lot of speeches to do this time of year. Um, Archer Heights neighborhood of Chicago, a Pulaski and Archer right by Midway Airport. Um, great neighborhood, great community, huge building. You can't miss it. You can see it if you fly over. Yeah, you can. So how long have you been principal? I am finishing my second year. I'm very grateful. So this is your kind of... You can say, yeah, if, you know, you've had these kids for... A good portion. Unlike For last half year. of their high school career, yeah, yeah, yeah they have a character of where, their own. Each class does. Where did you transfer from? I previously spent a year at Back of the Yards College Prep, um, learning from Patty Brecky, the principal there. She was my mentor, um, and prior to that, my entire teaching career was at North Lawndale College Prep uh, on the West Side. Did you always know you wanted to be a principal? I did not. I did my undergrad in electrical engineering at the University of Michigan. It's kind of like ballet yeah. to early childhood to po to politics. politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Electrical engineering? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah, all right, I don't think I have, all the times I've been to your <laughs> school and I've stopped, I, give me the pathway for Allison from electrical engineering wiring to mm -hmm. helping kids wire their brain ready for the future. Yeah, I thought I was going to end up in semiconducting devices. Um, I'd like to think they're similar fields because either way you're problem solving. You're given a set of constraints, a set of resources, and you have to figure out the most interesting. You know, yeah. effective solution. But. I realized about my third year into my undergrad that I, I just wasn't jiving with the, the idea of um, computer programming. Where are you at school? At asking. University of Michigan. Okay. Um, and in my spare time, because I spoke Spanish, I was tutoring um, students in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. And there was one in particular who made quite the impression on me. He was a recent immigrant from Guatemala. Um, because of his age and his immigrant status, he was somehow denied access to the public schools there. I didn't know the whole story behind it, but he wanted to finish his GED, and the language was a bit of a barrier. And so I worked closely with him for two years. We got him his GED, and that really just set me on a path for education. Was anybody in the family in education, or was, every, or was engineering kind of where the left side of the brain is? That I am the black sheep of the family. I, <laughs> uh, I come from a family of journalists uh, in Detroit, in the Detroit area. Yeah, I know. I know. Wait. I know. Can we cancel this interview now? <laughs> <laughs> um, really? You could tell I didn't so follow who, their path. What did your uh, mom and dad do? Uh, my dad worked for the Detroit News and then ended up moving into advertising. My mom went into corporate communications for Trinity Health. They're a pretty large system. Uh -huh. They work with oil and yeah. oil. Yeah. And so where did your spark for uh, engineering go? And then I want to, uh, okay, where did that come out of journalism? I was always a math, I wasn't the writer in the family. I was a math person. I think. I, you know, high school is so formative for students, and so my math teachers um, were people I looked up to, were people I felt safe and close with, and they had always encouraged me, you know. At so that your time, own teachers? Yeah. At that time, it was more of a budding, I think, up-and-coming field with good job prospects, and they said, you should try it, you'd be good at it. I did get a lot of good scholarship opportunity being a woman in engineering. I was going to say that it must have been unusual, Yeah. as it is still now. Yeah. Huh, and so... How, give me your journey then to Chicago from Michigan. Well, I wanted, you know, I kind of was aware I was going to change career paths, but changing majors would have, you know, I would have been at Michigan um, for more years than I needed to be. Even with in-state uh -huh. tuition, it still would have been. Yeah, a, a exactly. Yeah. Oh, and I'd be watching all my friends go on. <laughs> I'd be alone. Um, so I knew I wanted to get an education. I wanted to find a master's program that had certification. I had always been interested in Chicago. I got into Northwestern as an undergrad and framed my acceptance letter, hung it above my bed, but uh, the scholarship financial aid package was just so much better at Michigan. So uh, UIC mm -hmm. does urban education really, really well, and I was accepted into their program, and I came here, and I'll probably never go back. And so you were at UIC mm -hmm. urban education. Correct. We gradu you graduate. Now, you know, UIC does uh, a lot of... Uh, the principal training, yes, school principals. Uh, yeah, well, and I'm back there now working on my doctorate for it. Really? 
Yeah, I might be done in December. What's the question you're answering? Um, looking at how you build organizational leadership capacity in a large school, right? So not many schools have 188 teachers like Kerry does. Mm -hmm. um, and UIC has not had a doctoral candidate explore a large high school in that way. So Interesting. I'm venturing into that territory. <laughs> Full force. <laughs> we'll see my head. Another, another thing uh, unusual uh, for a school principal going back in, although your colleague at Von Steuben. Yeah, Laura got, Lamont. Yeah, she just got her PhD. So you come out of UIC, you a teacher or you go right into uh, being a principal? A teacher, teacher, yeah. I spent six years at North Lawndale College Prep. Uh -huh. um, Teaching? Math, Spanish, interdisciplinary research studies. That was the part of how I ended up in administration. I just had a diverse set of interests and I got more and more involved in different facets of the school and started to realize if I moved into administration I would be able to do more of that sort of work and shape students' experiences more broadly. So six years teaching, mm -hmm. and then did you, do you want to become a pr school principal? I or did. Did it? And UIC has the Urban Education Leadership Program. That's the doctoral degree along with the principal preparation. And they got me the great residency with Patty Brecky at Back of the Yards. And I have a tremendous coach in Dr. Cynthia Barron. And I, you know, really the, the network of colleagues um, that I've gained from being at UIC in that program is a huge part of the reason I continue to be driven to do this work. Hmm. So tell me uh, what's been the biggest surprise about being a principal uh, that you were on the upside and the, big, and the hardest challenge of uh, given all the preparation, mm -hmm. meaning being an engineer and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but the hardest challenge that you didn't see in that the school UIC and not UIC itself, but sure. kind of that academic training didn't prepare you for that you really that only the on the job experience because there's always this big debate, you know, sure. between theory versus practice, and no theory can prepare you for. The oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think they're one and the same: the surprise and the challenge, and it is the politics, the political di dynamics of the role. Uh, you know, you do do a good job of getting exposed to the theory of community relationships, community investment, uh, but until you're really sitting in that seat understanding that, okay, the president of the neighborhood association is gonna watch your ear and your attention and you know the parents and the local, local business owners sort of have a stake in what occurs in and around the school, uh, especially in our state, and the, there's you know a much bigger political context going on, and as the leader of that building and the advocate for those students, you need to have a role and what's happening bigger picture as well, and so sort of just balancing the demands of so many people outside of the school as well as what's happening inside. Hmm. And so, what about uh, is there any politics inside the building, or we're not going to talk about? It? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's like uh, any organization competing. Yeah, any organization competing for resources, competing for the the attention and stuff. And I, you know, Curie has so many awesome things happening that it is. It's a real challenge to make sure you highlight all of them as they're happy, it's hard to keep up with it. So you, that, I want to get to that because I think uh, what's happening at your school kind of tells a story about what's happening uh, in Chicago public schools. It's mm -hmm. really on the, uh, on the positive. So tell me, uh, give me the, if you were, here's your five set, your Andy Warhol 15 seconds on Curry High School that everybody should know what's happening there. Yeah. Um, my elevator speech, right, the pitch. I would say that Curry High School is the most exciting high school in Chicago public schools right now. Uh, it is diverse in every sense of the word from the student body composition, but also more importantly, I think in the academic opportunities we offer our students. So we have top class, best in the city programs in AVID, which is a college prep program, international baccalaureate, which is, you know, we have world class programs there. That's the one I'm most familiar with yeah. there. The fine arts program as well. Your dance instructor there, she's spectacular, she, as is your IB teachers. Yeah, the IB teachers, world class, our dance teacher, um, it, you know, certified as the best dance teacher in the country this year. She was National Dance Educator of the Year. We're proud of that. Um, and then we so also have our career. <laughs> I'm very yeah. proud of her, man. It was so nice that you visited her to congratulate yeah. her. Um, and our CTE program, Career and Technical Ed. Uh, has about nine different programs and the students, you know, a student that comes to Curie might be intimidated by the size, but the reality is you find a home there. You find the program that, program that fits your interests. You find the program that's really going to drive you to be motivated to 
to make a plan for what's going to happen after high school, and we do our best to just wrap around and support them to get there. Do you think there's a reinterpretation of or rethinking of what high schools are today, given what's going on in the economy, given what's going on in college, or are they the same as they were as recently as 10, 20 years ago? I definitely don't think they're the same as what they were. I don't think they can be. Um, I think we're still trying to figure out how to how to best prepare them for the future. I, th I think um, we all recognize it, and there's pathways there. I mean, the IB and the CTE program at Curie are two examples of you should, CTE for people is you should it's career career and technical right. education right. Um, examples being digital media, broadcast arts, culinary arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's all about contextualizing what they're learning, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's the students, oh, one of course we had our last year in the class of 2016, our first ever um, student to get accepted and attend Harvard University. Um, As we would say, Mazel Tov. <laughs> mazel tov. <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah, it was very exciting. Her name is Daisy. Super proud of her. Her family was very involved, of course, very proud of her as well. We have, of course, I want so to talk about- So that's your first one at Harvard? Yeah. Yeah. That's, which, which, of the CTE, IB- She was in the International, International Baccalaureate Program. That's a, that's a big, uh, you know- It's ribbon. huge. That's a big Yeah, ribbon. huge. We also have, I don't know the student's name because I wasn't there, but sh she's a- you know, an alumni from many years ago, but it now this year got accepted to Harvard Law School. So Curie will have somebody at Harvard Law next year as well. Mm -hmm. oh, we had a president from the... <laughs> yeah, we might have a future president from Curie. Who yeah, knows? That's, that's a big deal. So give me a couple other kids. Yeah, I'm thinking, of course, of a student named Jessica. She's our valedictorian this year. She's going to University of Michigan, which is why I want to bring her up. <laughs> um, also in the international... That sounds like an court. inside job if there ever was one. <laughs> I try. Yeah. Every year it's my goal to get at least one kid. At least one. Oh, that's fabulous. Uh-huh. Um, she... She's, did you say full rider digest? Oh, almost. almost There's important. a little bit of a gap her family and I have to cover, but it's and out of state. what program also is she? Also interne International Baccalaureate. Uh, These are all leading questions and because I want to get to the IB in a second. Oh, yeah. But now I'm teasing, yeah, yeah, but yeah. go ahead. We can just dive right in after this since right. it keeps coming up. But uh, she travels from the Chinatown area. Her parents, right, her experiences as, as a student in the U.S. were very different than her parents' ex experiences as a students in China, and that disconnect has really made her persistence um, a challenge for her, but also now a celebration. Uh, parents who weren't sure she was making the right decisions, who by, you know, you have school choice in Chicago, they weren't sure if Curie was gonna be the best fit for her given that she had to travel to come to us. Not sure if going to Michigan was gonna be the best decision, but when you talk to the student and see her eyes light up, she's going into engineering at Michigan. Um, Talk, yeah. Now, re, that was that Michigan engineering. I had nothing to do with it, I swear. <laughs> um, she made all these choices uh -huh. on her own. That's yeah, fabulous. she's just that smart. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited for her. I'm very excited for her. She's already in a woman in science engineer, in engineering group that'll kind of help welcome her there and, and have her own support network in Ann Arbor. Tell, talk about, uh, I mean, so everybody knows, you know I'm, I'm I wouldn't say partial, but we launched the expansion of the International mm -hmm. Baccalaureate mm -hmm. at your school. Um, we just and we had President Obama, the Secretary of Education, um, at your school, when we announced also expansion in. I think we're now up to 27 neighborhood high schools that have International Baccalaureate either programs or the school is complete. Why that's worked, or what would you do uh, more, or how much more can you do, or what else would you want to? Yeah, um, it's fantastic, right? The IB program, as we know, that the students who graduate from IB do better than any other group in CPS in terms of college persistence. So the more students you can give access to, the better, right? We're always thinking in Chicago public schools and as leaders, we're supported and thinking about how do you increase equity? How do you increase access to students? So we're excited about our expansion at Curie because it's bridging the CTE program with IB. Hmm. So again, we're- How are we're, you doing that? We're large, we're diverse. Uh, we are, IB has a career program that we have applied for and will work to integrate. So the students will get to remain in their career focused sort of major area. But then instead of taking an honors or a regular English class, they'll be in IB English. Instead of taking you know, an honors or regular math class, they'll be in the IB mathematics class or Spanish, et cetera. So they'll be able to get a CTE career certificate at the end of their four years with their diploma, as well as IB certificates, IB credit, college going credit, and 
Um, it's bringing kind of the best of two worlds together and giving access to a group of students who previously were not involved in those classes. See, I think your answer there is that what I think is really, this is just, I'm not this uh, expert like you, but we have a school like Crane and like Instituto that are medical. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have your bridging, which is really innovative, the International Baccalaureate and the career. Mm -hmm. So high school is becoming more and more like what college, you, in your mind, I, what college was, that you know, this is my major and this is my minor mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it's, more, I wouldn't say career focused, but it is, you're getting a well-rounded education, mm -hmm. but with a little a more of a directional focus. Yeah. Uh, and that prepares, uh, and you prepares kids for the future educationally mm -hmm. and also career-wise. And I, I don't know if it's too young to do it, but it's actually where I think high schools are now going. Yeah, I Does mean. Does that make sense? Or absolutely, do I do. I mean, as someone, right, I don't, I think you should have a plan when you walk out of the doors of a high school, but if you're well prepared and that plan doesn't work out, for example, if you think you're going into electrical engineering, but then all of a sudden you or realize dance. you're not passionate about <laughs> it, right? If you have the right set of skills in terms of you can persist in the face of rigor, right? you have the organizational skills, you know how to advocate for yourself, you know how to build relationships with adults, you're going to do well even if plan A doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it is okay for students to have a focus and be passionate about something as a high school student, even if it's not the, where they're going to be 15 years down the road. Absolutely. So let me ask you a question uh, on that uh, subject. Do you think um, as the high schools, let, let, let me ask it this way. You got 490 kids, I think you said? Graduating, yeah. Okay. How many are going, uh, have a post high school plan or have like college, community college, armed forces, trades, or just go straight to a job? Yeah. So ideally all of them. I know at this point we're hovering around 60% in terms of they already have their orientation date. They, they've accepted their financial aid packets, right? There's all these steps that have, getting the acceptance letter isn't the end point. And that's our counselors, our support staff. We work with Gear Up, who is a tremendous partner They're to CPS. Partner, yeah. uh, they work all summer because the kids getting that acceptance letter in March or April isn't the last step. So we're right now at 60%. We're confident that number is gonna go up still through the summer. Uh, last year we ended up, I think around 66%. At college? Yeah. And then anybody going on career-wise to armed forces? We do. Trade? We always have a few. I don't know the precise number off the top of my head. We do have a JROTC Marine-based program in our school as well. Uh, that appeals to, to many kids. And, you know, Curie's a big school. And so the kids have this saying, like, oh, we do it big at Curie. Curie, we do it big. <laughs> so exciting. Uh, I say to them, it's a, something they hear me say many, many times throughout the year is, that's great. We want you to have a good time while you're here. We want you to be successful. But the whole point is to do something bigger and better when you leave here. Um, and so the idea of having a plan, regardless of whether it's you're going into a job, you're going into the armed services, you're going into college, you got to have that plan. You got to be ready to do something bigger and better than Curie. Curie's great. We're very proud of our school. But the whole point is for you to go on and do something else you're proud of. Does it, you know, you say that because you, you know we're embarking on doing what yeah. system school-wide that every child and in helping ensuring every child um, has a plan mm -hmm. uh, post high school, meaning mm -hmm. college, community college, armed forces, trade, job with training. Um, you think that makes sense? And uh, what would what would you need to succeed at that? Yeah, I think I absolutely. Mean, be honest, because no, I will. Yeah, a lot, some people disagree with it. I think yeah, I have three kids; they have a plan. Sure. So you got to have a plan, in my view, because otherwise, it's uh, uh, you know Russian roulette, and that's crazy. It absolutely makes sense. I think one of our students said it best, right? When that announcement came out, we have a pretty active social media account ourselves, and we posted it. And one of our seniors comment, or I'm sorry, alumni that graduated last year commented. One of the first to comment. Of course, there were some controversial comments, but one of them said, Curie's been doing that, right? And I think a lot of my colleagues in Chicago Public Schools would say the same thing. We've been striving for this for a <laughs> long time. And so to formalize it and say, yes, this is so important that we're going to put it in place that it is the expectation for every kid, um, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of their interests, that every kid needs to have a plan. Yes, it's what I would want for my kid. You, as you said, it's what you want for your kid. We should want it for every kid. Yeah, and I also think if you set the expectations, they'll hit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and a lot of the structures are there in place. Of course, you know, the resources 
we do need is, is the counseling, that guidance counseling staff. Uh, right now at Curie, the ratio of counselors to students is about one to 350. I would love for it to be one to 300, if not lower, but. Um, what is the, is there an ideal? The ASCPCA, the American Society of Professional School Counselors, uh -huh. um, they, I believe, put it at one to 270, mm -hmm. I think. Okay. So um, what was, uh, again, to give you, I wanted to, everybody to know what you're doing and kind of the success. What was, what's your graduation rate now? Neighborhood high school. Yeah, neighborhood high school. I know last year's, right, these year, this year's numbers are still right. a little bit up in the air. There's a couple of kids that are still turning in their service learning hours today, but it's okay. We're going to take care of them. Uh, last year we hit, I believe we hit 74%. I know... Um, that information is public, so I would want to double check to make sure I'm speaking accurately. But I remember it was a big deal because as a, as a high school, we went from a school that was graduating about two thirds of our students to three quarters. And that was a big deal, like a big shift. Okay. Um, you know, we always want to strive. We're, st we're going to strive for 100 percent. And so we'll see in my second year, you, you know, ask me again four years from now and I'll, I'll know all the data from my time there. Let me, you know, one of the other things I think that uh, we have a requirement in Chicago that I think is really, really important. I say that because very diverse city, mm -hmm. 140 languages spoken, um, and beyond that, and I think we always, not always, not everybody agrees with this, but from our diversity comes our strength. But I think one of the things that helps is if you create a common foundation. Mm -hmm. And so we require, um, which we did not have when I was growing up, which I think uh, service, mm -hmm. community service, giving something back beyond yourself. So give me some of the interesting projects that some of the kids worked on uh, in the community service area. And do you think that's a good uh, kind of requirement for graduation? Yes, yeah, there's so many neat things that happen that arise out of that requirement. Um, and so many students that go above and beyond. I have a sophomore that already has 400 hours of community service. 400 <laughs> yes. hours? Yeah. I can introduce you to him the next time you come. I want to know how he, him or her <laughs> manages their time. Yeah, uh, we have good relationships with some. I mean, part of it is it pushes the school to build some really nice relationships with some nonprofits in the area. Mm -hmm. We have there's an organization called Working Bikes that year after year takes in many of our students and they get the hands-on skill of repairing bikes, working with, with bike the community. Mechanic. Yeah. Um, actually, I think the young lady going into Michigan Engineering has spent time there. Mm -hmm. um, it you know it also really now we're embedding it in the curriculum of the school and it, it helps do that contextualized learning we were talking about earlier where what I'm learning about in the classroom, I'm seeing in action, I'm applying to what I'm doing in my spare time, to what I'm interested in, I'm connecting it to the community and how it's going to affect the community in the future. The, the project-based service learning, the, the teachers at Curie have really um, rallied around it, I think are very excited. We've done some professional development, some teacher-led professional development around it, and those who have really integrated it into their curriculum, it energizes their teaching as well to think about, okay, how is this assignment going to play out when you leave my classroom? Curie has a, a fa I'd like to think it's famous annual senior citizen prom. It's a huge event we host. Um, hundreds of senior citizens from our local community come. That, that is so cool. Yeah, kids can invite their neighbors, staff. Some of our staff bring their parents. They bring their neighbors. The local nursing homes bus their um, their people over, and we set it up just like a prom. There's a DJ. We have a band, and then the kids are dancing with them. The kids are serving the food. The kids are decorating for it, uh, kind of chauffeuring them around for the night. It's, it's really good for the, um, the yeah. elders of our it's community great. Great and really good grandma. for the young people. Yeah. yeah. Give me, uh, you mentioned this child in Michigan that was mm -hmm. influential. Who else would you say was influential in your life that when you look back helped you make these choices? Mm -hmm. um, of course my parents. Yeah. Um, of course they were tremendous. Do you have a teacher that you think kind of changed uh, I had, to, you know, I had good relationships with so many people. I, I had an assistant principal that was really uh, a guiding figure for me. She was a student council sponsor, uh, as well as the assistant principal. In high school? Or yeah, no? yeah. Monica McGraw is her name. Uh, I, I don't know what she's doing now. I've lost touch with her. But she, uh, I needed some, you know, sometimes some extra support. I, I did very well academically, but then there's also the high pressure, the high anxiety, some of the other things you're carrying with you as a young person. And she really helped me navigate that successfully. I think back on, uh, you know, I had a teacher, history teacher in high school, Larry Grody. In college, it was Jack Neal's, the, the 
American Constitution through the legal process. Wow. So I can, that just really. Stands out to you. Yeah, besides your parents or your, so they really kind of were influential people in mm -hmm. helping me. Does they said go into politics? It's an easy you know, field. <laughs> You'll yeah, be happy yeah. all the time. No, they, you know, I told you, you know, you know this. It was a coincidence, not a, yeah. it was a summer internship, which is also why I'm big about our summer jobs for mm -hmm. little things that, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of stumbled upon and then you get there. I'm, we got to end. I got a couple questions. Okay. You ready Let's for the do fast it. round? Business. Okay, Lakefront. here it is. Yeah. Chicago Lakefront or Chicago Riverfront? Lakefront. Thick or thin pizza? Thin. Cubs or Sox? Cubs. 16 inch or 12 inch? 12. Wow, that was the quickest answer. I played softball, yeah, when I fast pitch. Are you? Yeah. You still play? In uh, a league? If I had time, I would. Uh, okay, bungalow? I, I just uh, purchased my first home and it was a bungalow in one of the classic bungalow neighborhoods of Chicago, Portage Park. That is so cool. Okay, yeah. when I was, a, first of all, you know, when I was a congressman, I used to represent Porch Park, and I made the, I worked on getting the bungalow as a part of the uh, National uh, Historic Landmark. Mm -hmm. I see the signs when we go for walks in the neighborhood. Yeah, it's really cool. It Congratulations. Is. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Allison. Thanks for your time. Congratulations for on this graduation and all the kids. We're very excited. Go Condors. <laughs> You have been listening to Chicago Stories, a new podcast from City Hall featuring the stories of everyday Chicagoans as told to Mayor Rahm Emanuel.